Is your thought saying no? This is my Okay. Precisely. I'm going to sit down since it's just chilling. I'm going to stand for an hour. Okay, well, good morning and welcome to our mastermind this morning. A couple housekeeping things. Uh, first of all, on Thursday at 9 o'clock, the Global Business Committee is having an open forum and they're going to talk about how to get your listings marketed internationally. And so if you want to attend that, you need to make reservations. On Friday, we're having a free CE class from 1 to 4, hosted by New American Mortgage, and it's going to be conventional FHA, VA, which is best for your client. And then immediately after the CE class at 4, we're going to have our monthly office social. So please join us. Just RSVP for the class because we're going to limit it to 25 people. No kidding, 25 people. Okay, so this morning I'm going to talk about my trip to Washington, D.C. I went to Washington, D.C. in the middle of May for what for 35 years has been called the NAR Mid-Year Conferences. It's most of the issues and most of the meetings are political in nature. And we do get to go up to the Hill and visit with our representatives. But for the first time in 35 years, Congress was not in session. Senate was there, but Congress was not. So they changed the name of the event to the Realtor Party Convention. So there were three parties, the Republican, the Democrat, and the Realtor. So I'm just going to go over some highlights of meetings that I went. I did go partially on GLBAR's dime. Just so you know, I had to submit an application, answer all these questions, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the board of directors uh, selected to go. So the first thing I went to was called the Mega Councils Meeting, and it was comprised of members of large associations. Well, this was mainly a complaining session, and they were complaining about associations throughout the country not providing core services to their buyers. I mean, their members. They don't have websites. They don't have code of ethics hearings, they're not having yearly financial audits, and they have no strategic plan. All of these things are required by NAR. So, this year, every association has to recertify with NAR. And if they are not compliant, they're going to have their charter revoked, and they will no longer be a member of NAR. So it was kind of a boring hour and a half meeting, but from there I went to is called the Idea Exchange for Brokers. Now NAR does have a committee. Uh, you have to apply, be selected. That's comprised of brokers, and they were sitting at a long table. They were kind of the panel, and the rest of us were kind of observing. And it was very interesting. The people there was nobody on the committee that was from our neck of the woods, so to speak. Uh, they were mainly from the Midwest, the Northeast, and the South. But the interesting trends that went through this meeting is that nationwide, we all have the same problem. Inventory's down. There are a lot, large amount of cash sales. The number of agents is way up. And the rental market is down. So that was interesting to me because I always thought nobody has the same problems Nevada has, but nationwide, those are the problems. And they identified three key issues and challenges. And one of the main issues is brokerage is not keeping up with technology. So there were suggestions about issues with training staff. Uh, there were suggestions about training key agents in the office to be tech agents. So if you have a technical problem, you know this person is very computer literate and you can go to this person to help. Uh, and then another suggestion was to provide weekly tech tips. Um, and then it was suggested that 
I don't see this happening with us yet, but mainly down the line, that there be a staff person whose sole job is to provide social media output for the office, the agents, so they're kind of all on the same page. It was a very, very interesting meeting. So another, the second issue was regional economic issues. And one of the main complaints was with the appraisers. The appraisers are not keeping up with the trends in the market because appraisers look at historical data and not where the market is going. And that is really affecting appraisals nationwide. And again, I thought it was just Nevada, but it's not. And you guys are sitting there looking like deer in the headlights. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. Okay, the other big problem, we sort of come out of this, but nationwide is the coming soon properties that are being sold outside the MLS. Now, Zillow has just started a thing, of course, they're not subject to any of NARS regulations, where agents can advertise a coming soon listing for 30 days on Zillow. However, there is a caveat. You have to have permission from your local MLS to advertise that. The big problem with that is it violates Articles 1, 3, and 10 of the Code of Ethics. So if you are advertising a listing and hoping for a pre-sale or your own buyer, just be aware you are violating the Code of Ethics. So the Portland, Oregon MLS has become very proactive in this. If there is a listing that's advertised as coming soon, the agent's find $1,000 automatically. So, I don't know if that's coming here, but it does violate our local MLS for you to advertise a listing as coming to the Jay. So, this is something I've been coached to do, which I've never done, is to put a coming to the sign or something else. Would that be the same thing? It's the same thing, it's a violation. Okay. It's a violation I done. of articles 1, 3, and 10 of the Code of Ethics, and our MLS does not allow it. We had a whole lot of problems with that back when the REO market was booming. Uh, there was one particular company in town that was notorious for putting a sign out on their REOs that said, coming soon. Agents would drive by, they would go, oh, this might be right for my buyer. They'd search it on the MLS and it was not there. But the banks were telling agents to do that, and again, the banks have no idea of our code of ethics, and they were encouraging it. Um, another thing that's happening economically is young agents are coming back or coming into the market. I know at our local association, GLVAR, once a month they do orientation and the classes are full. If you were to join the association today, there's no way you could get the July orientation class. At this point, you'll probably be darn lucky if you got in the August orientation class because young people are coming on board as agents. Uh, and then the other thing was state and local legislation that might be affecting the market. This is not us, but in a large number of states, Home inspectors do not have to be licensed. And there are serious problems in these states with that. Just keep in mind, this was a nationwide meeting, not just local. Okay, so then there was a meeting, it's called NAR 360 with President Steve Brown. And he just kind of tells you what's going on with the National Association of Realtors, what they've done in the past six months. And I don't know if you know this, but NAR, National Association of Realtors, is the largest political hag for indirect political contributions in the country. 
And so far through the middle of May, our PAC, which is our uh, political PAC, has raised $4,950,791, all from realtors contributing. Okay, so then at this meeting, Senator Debbie Stabenow from a Democrat from Michigan was one of the guest speakers. She, along with our Senator Dean Heller, have authored a bill for the Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act. They both sponsored it. Well, as of May, when we met, and this is still the case, it has passed out of the Senate's, Senate Finance Committee. But there it sits, because Congress will not pass a single tax provision bill, and there are 89 what's called extenders. These are tax acts that expired in 2013 that people want renewed, and so the Debt Forgiveness Act is probably not going to pass without all these 89 other extenders attached to it. But it passed out of the Finance Committee it, months ago. Oh, Like four, gosh, five, six months Like ago. way back in February. Yeah. Well, it was way back, way back January, whatever. Okay, so that is the problem. The other problem is nationwide, there's not a whole lot of interest in this except for um, Senator Stabenow, who's from Michigan, who has the same problem that Senator Heller has in Nevada. Uh, we still have tons of short sales, but nationwide short sales are only 2.2% of the market. So that's a problem. Uh, she was worried about the house. She said the house has not even addressed it. She said it may pass through the Senate, but the house has no plans to address the Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act. And she said, but the atmosphere in the Senate is more about, this is a quote, more about scoring political points than getting anything done. So, also at this meeting, we have a presentation from Realtor.com. They have a new advertising logo. It's called Accuracy Matters. And they show some really cute commercials. I don't think I've seen any of them local, but one is a couple's driving around with their kids in the back and they go knock on the door and go, hey, is this where the open house is? And the guy opens the door and is bathrobe eating a bowl of cereal. And then at the end it goes, accuracy matters, consult a realtor. So look for those coming soon. Okay, also while I was there, I had two small meetings um, with Nelson Jane, our CEO, Wendy DeVecchio, who's the executive officer of GLVAR, and myself met with two other groups. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Zip Forms, our contract with Zip Forms is up in December. And we have not decided if we're going to renew with zip forms because they've not been really proactive in posting changes that we've made in forms. And so we had breakfast with another company. And I can't tell you where we're going with this because I am on the pad for the new forms and there are three companies that we interviewed. They were all here last week and gave presentations. Um, the PAG Political Presence Advisory Group is going to meet again in July and we're going to get a breakdown on the costs and the features of each of the three companies. The PAG will make a decision and then it will go to the board. So for either approval. So I can't tell you where we're going. I can't tell you if after December, we're going to have zip forms or not, but I will tell you that if we don't select zip forms, the new company and zip forms will run concurrently for three months. So you will have time to learn and to adjust. 
I think I'll pass it to the finance committee so we can look at the numbers. Oh, I'm not sure about that. All I heard was it would the pad would make a recommendation and then it would go to the board. So we're gonna run simultaneously, we're paying for two. No, no, we were zip forms is paid for through December. But we wouldn't have anything budgeted for a new uh, both of the other companies have agreed to kind of give us a trial period. Oh, okay. So well, what happens to the history that we have in zip forms? You'll have three months to transfer it over. So then I had another little private meeting. Um, this was on, um, this was actually a dinner meeting. It was this weird restaurant. It was like Asian tapas or something. It was just really weird food. But also up for renewal is our super lockbox. And so there are three companies, including Supra, who won our business. And so one of the companies did take about eight of us to this dinner. Where that's going, I can't really tell you. I was just invited as being a board of director, but I'm not on the president's action group for new lot boxes. But there's possibility there may be a lot box change out down the road. So just be prepared for that. So then I went to the federal priority issues briefing with Jerry Giovanelli, who is the NAR government affairs director. Now I just want you to know I was in DC, but I, my body was still on Las Vegas time, and this meeting started at 7 a.m. But I was there. So here's the problem with Congress. The House has 233 Republicans. They have 119 Democrats, but they need 435 votes to pass any legislation. And they're all very bipartisan, so nothing is getting done. You it's mean partisan? Yeah, partisan. That's what I meant. Thank you. And so it's hard to get the 435 votes. You mean votes. stubborn? <laughs> yeah. Now, in the Senate, there are 45 Republicans, 53 Democrats, and two independents. 50 votes are needed to pass any legislation. So that's the problem there. So what happens is we meet with uh, the federal priority issues briefing um, in the morning, and then in the afternoon, Nevada, every state does it differently, but Nevada takes a trip up to the Capitol. Now, I will tell you in Nevada, we are very, very fortunate because our people in Congress make the time for us. There are some states that their political representatives will not meet with them. So they say, I'm sorry, I don't have time. But we get a private room, and then each of our people come in and we tell them, this is, these are our issues and where do you stand on them? Um, we took a bus. It was cold. It was damp. It was humid. It was awful. And then we had to go through security to get into the Capitol. It's like going through the airport and we were told over and over and over and over again, you may not take any food, you may not take any drink into the Capitol. So we went through the scanners, and one of the girls from Sparks, Nevada, had a granola bar in her purse. And they caught it, and so she had to leave and go outside and dispose of it in the trash can. But anyway, so we took the bus, which was supposed to drop us off at the visitor center. Well, no, our bus driver couldn't figure out how to get there, because it was also the same time as the week-long uh, police Association to honor the fallen hero thing in DC and the, around the Capitol was just packed. So he dropped us off on the other side of the Capitol. We're like, no, no, no. We need to go the other side to the business. I don't know how to get there. Okay, you're only a bus driver in Washington, DC, and you can't figure out how to get there. So we had to walk about 30 minutes to get around the Capitol, get the business that we went through. We go into this room, there are 60 of us from Nevada. 
Um, and first, Harry Reid came in and we told him what our issues were, and he agreed, he supported all our issues. And then Senator Dean Heller came in and we went through the same drill. And I'm telling you, if you've never seen Dean Heller, for you women, in person, he is so cute. He smiles, he jokes, he laughs, he has a big dimple, he is just a darling. So, uh, now, our four repres congressional representatives were back in Nevada, but they each sent a staff member who assured us that yes, they were aware of our issues. And I want to tell you, I would bet money that Senator Dina Titus' staff person was 12 years old. There's no doubt in my mind this girl was 12. Very sharp, but she was 12. Okay, so these were our talking points. We had three of them that each state was supposed to present to their representatives. But like I said, some states, people would meet with them. One was to preserve the mission and purpose of the FHA, because there is legislation to reform FHA and to make it only for lower income and first time home buyers. NAR is opposed to this. Um, the other thing that we, the other, another point was to reform the secondary mortgage market. We want to be sure there is participation by the government in the secondary mortgage market. But there is a flavor on Capitol Hill to know make that all private money. So we want to encourage private capital to return to the market, but we also want the government stability in Freddie and Fat. Why are you frowning? Okay, our third thing was to preserve real estate related tax policies because right now there's no viable tax reform legislation that's been introduced. A lot of the tax provisions, as I said, expired in 2013, and there are people in Congress who want to do away with the mortgage interest deduction. They want to do away with the property tax deduction. They don't see the need for the Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act because, oh my God, the IRS is out so much money due to that tax bill that they could be collecting. And they also want to do away with what they call like kind exchanges or 1031s. NAR is opposed to all of these. And there's also a move to put Freddie and Fannie into a conservatorship and create a new agency called FMIC. So, okay, all our people were in agreement with our talking points. And another thing you might need to be aware of is the Bureau of Land Management, and I, excuse me, I forget the number, I did not write it down. But they want to take away something like 184,000 acres of Nevada land because they're saying the grouse is endangered. <laughs> and they want to preserve the grouse. Why and are, are the turtles eating them? I don't know. <laughs> and Dean Holler was so cute. He says, Have any of you ever eaten grouse? Oh, I have. And then he says, has anybody ever eaten grouse twice? <laughs> and nobody raised their hand. He said, I thought so. And he said, here's the thing. How can it be endangered if it's legal to hunt them? So Dean Keller is fighting the land grab. So yeah. who would end up with the land? Your land management. But, or are they taking it from private citizens? Is it? I have no idea. It wasn't what I operated on. And that was the first I heard about it. And the only person that or would they just not allow development on it or something? They have the state, they don't have the state. They, well, state uh, they would just be federal land now. Um, back to the first issue the FHA did, you all bring up the fact that they had lowered our limits severely on what you could borrow? That was brought up, land. and um, at this point, it is not being addressed by anybody, nor is still fighting it. Um, but that was brought up to both Reed and Helen. 
So we left there. We were there all afternoon. We left there. Lord, we had to stand on the street for an hour and a half, even though we called for our bus to come back and pick us up because we're now leaving the capital. And then we got back on the bus, and gee, the bus drivers, we all met at one place and we were picked up at one place. But now everybody, we were all staying at different hotels, kind of all within a five mile radius. But everybody wanted to be dropped off at their hotel. The bus driver didn't know where any of our hotels were. And people, we would stop at a stoplight, people would say, I'm getting off here because we just drove around and around and around. And I was on the bus with Jack Woodcock and our bus driver turned left. Jack Woodcock said, you should have turned right because if you know Jack Woodcock, he's been going to this for many years, probably since the beginning. And I said, Jack, you need to be driving the bus. So it took us a long time, a long time to get back to the hotel. So generally speaking, they always have some kind of entertaining political speaker. So the next thing I went to was the next morning, Insights with Chris Matthews. And he was actually very funny. Um, I was sitting like second row from the front, so I had a very good view of him. Trust me, he is much older than he looks on TV. Much older. Um, but he said, right now, here's what he sees for the... 2016 race. For the Republicans, right now it's kind of a tie, this was in May, uh, between Rand Paul and Jeb Bush. And he said, but the Republicans have room for a white knight to come charging to the front. And he said, it's not going to be Marco Rubio because he's too young and too strong on immigration. And he said, the sleepers were Scott Walker, and Governor Kasich for the Republican nomination. As far as the Democrats go, he said Hillary will get the nomination unless something drastic happens because in any polling, 66% of poll voters say absolutely they'll vote for Hillary for president. And he said, here's the thing, uh, no one holds Hillary accountable for anything President Obama has done. Uh, he said, November 2014, he said a good night for the Democrats would be if they only lost five seats, but they will probably lose anywhere from five to ten houses, seats in the House. He said the problem with Democrats, and he is a Democrat, right? I don't watch the show, but he's a Democrat, very liberal. He's very liberal. He said, here's the problem with Democrats. They're not trusted by the public with the budget. They're not trusted with what to do about the borders. They're not trusted with what the country needs, but they can talk a good game, but they just can't perform. And they can't prove that they are faithful stewards of the public's money. And he said they can't prove that they can figure out what to do about immigration. So that's why they're probably going to lose Tennessee. Okay, the next thing I attended, when we're there, um, towards the end, we have what's called the Nevada State Caucus, and all the people from Nevada that went, we meet, and we talk about, okay, these are the main issues, because we've all gone to different meetings. These are the main issues that we see with the meetings that we have attended. And the big one is, was the MLS committee meeting. I did not attend that meeting, but it was a good hour discussion at the Nevada caucus because the MLS committee, in their infinite wisdom, has decided that a participant, a participant is a broker owner, like Brandon is our participant, can sell their MLS data feed to third party vendors if they want to. And this passed out of the MLS committee. And it's a big controversy. Nevada does not want it. And, um, but most of the MLS committee, national committee, was for it. 
Um, an interesting thing is California is putting together a database of agent misbehaviors. Now, we have that. You can go to the real estate commission hearings. They're open. Um, you sit the open house after the commission hearings and you know what agent did what and what their punishment was. But here's what happened. So Jay comes over here from another office and wants to be a signature agent. I have no way to go in and find out if there's any complaints against her with the division, if she's had any professional standards complaints. But California's put together a database. So if you're in California and you've done something wrong, you could be looked up. Yes, Jay. When I went to that seller's representative specialist class, that designation SRS, they're wanting to put together, they're wanting to have us graded, like publicly, like have the, like a Yelp type thing yes. for realtors. NAR is fighting It's very scary because people can say anything about it. Mm -hmm. And NAR is fighting that too. They want that, you know, look you up and three people said bad things about you, so I'm never going to list with you. Yeah. Even, if, even though they weren't true. So, after we have the Nevada caucus, we go to what's called the Region 11 caucus. We belong, NAR divides the country up into regions, and we belong to Region 11. It's Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. I hope I didn't leave somebody out. So, our, re our whole region is opposed to this participants being allowed to sell their MLS data to third-party vendors. Now these third-party vendors are AVMs. You know what that is? It's like Zillow, automatic value. So they can say, the best automation value for this house is. And our whole region is opposed to it. There's possible privacy violations. It's going to make transactions more difficult because you go in for a listing appointment and you say, I've done a really thorough market analysis of your home and a good listing price is probably between 360 and 370. And your seller says, I'm sorry, I just looked this up and my house is worth 425. A lot of it is, and the way it's going out now is people are giving fees, or let's just say that you contract with somebody to do a property panorama on your house. Well, you've signed off on this person being able to do whatever they want with your info on this house. And that's how they get a lot of the information. They're not getting it officially from official MLSs. So yeah. if, if, let's say Brandon decided to sell, is that only our office information? No, he, would, or is it the he entire has MLS? Access. He has access to the entire MLS. So wouldn't the brokers get in competition about who could make the most money for selling it? Or it would really lower the value. Because, oh, you want to charge me $100 a month? I can get it from ABC Realty for fifty dollars a month. Charge who hundred dollars a month? The person, who, the person who wants the data. You mean like Joe, homeowner? Zillow. I mean like Zillow. Trulia. Zillow, Trulia. Trulia. Are you getting it, even Realtor. Right. Even Realtor. Even Realtor. Even Realtor. It's like they sold us all out. They well, take our work product and put it out there, and the brokers, us, we don't need. They try to sell us back our own leads. That's insulting. Okay. Exactly. So our region was opposed to this. So. Here's what happened. So the next day, Saturday morning, at eight o'clock, I'm still on West Coast time, all the NAR board members, I am not a NAR board member, I did not have the right to vote. In Las Vegas, the people who have the right to vote are the executive board of GLBAR, not the board of directors, 
Um, and then there are certain people who have applied to be NAR directors. I'm a regional vice president. I represent this group. I am a large brokerage rep. They all have those. So this whole thing and this room is packed. In fact, there were 8,850 attendees. This room is huge. And they even have perimeter balcony seating around the room. So this MLS situation came up for a vote. It was amazing how many people were for it. And then there were people against it. And then there was some confusion because somebody got up and said, well, I was on the MLS committee and I didn't know what we were voting for. So Haiti Kasama, our president, gets up to the microphone and she says, basically, there's a lot of confusion. No one is really sure what's going on. I'd like to table this and send it back to the committee. Well, that was defeated. So now we have a vote by the entire voting member of the members of the National Association of Realtors on whether or not we could go forward with participants being able to sell their data. Okay, so first they voted. I uh, your fourth say aye, uh, you oppose, uh, nay. It was so close they couldn't tell by a voice, voice and vote. So then every member had a little yellow piece of paper. And it was like, okay, if you're for it, hold up your yellow piece of paper. Our entire region was opposed. I happened to be sitting by a bunch of Cal behind the California delegation. They're all for it. Now, California's all for it, and New York's all for it, and Florida's all for it. They have so many members that it's hard to be defeated. But anyway, when they held up their yellow piece of paper, it was so close, they couldn't tell. So now, it's a stand-up vote. Stand up if you're for it, and they ask the regional director to count their regions and turn it in and then they had to add it up. Now, stand up if you're opposed. Regional directors count. Well, we lost by 13 votes. So don't tell me every vote does not count. Um, the other thing that you need to know about is this new bureau, the Consumer Finance Bureau. HUD, has now been moved to the Consumer Finance Bureau, which is a part, of, which is under the Department of the Treasury. And they are solely tasked with enforcing RESPA violations. And they have deep, deep pockets. So far, their budget is $266 million just to search out and enforce RESPA violations. Now before HUD was kind of mamby pamby, oh you did that, Rosemary, don't do it again. But now they are actively seeking RESPA violations. And they have the authority to find up to a million dollars a day. So the RESPA violation du jour is marketing service agreements. Now, in this office, anybody can come in. We have no agreement with any title company, pay us $5,000 and you can be the only marketing rep that comes in here. We have no market agreement with any mortgage company. There are a lot of companies in town that have these third party service agreements. And depending on the size of the company, they pay, pay big bucks to be the sole person authorized to come in. So there was a huge, 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 huge real estate team in Virginia that did a boom in business. I believe they were, were Long and Foster, but I could be wrong on that, so don't quote that. And they had an agreement with a title company that every one of their deals would go through this type of company. In return, 
the title company would pay the team $6,000 a month. <laughs> they were fined millions and millions and millions of dollars. The title company or the realtors? The realtors. Was it the title company? I don't know what I have to The real estate team, along with their world group, wow. was fined millions of dollars. So don't be taking any money, don't violate RESPA, don't say you must use this title company, don't say you must use this lender, because it violates RESPA. Well now the MOS, they're saying seller prefers XYZ title or, or request. Yeah, or request, or that's still skating on thin ice. It's skating on very thin ice. So. And you can't require someone to get pre qual through a certain lender. Well, the banks are doing it on REOs. I, where that comes into play, I can't really I'm answer seeing, that. I've seen a lot of it. Yeah. That seems like more of a scary requirement. Huh. It slows us down too from putting the offer. In. No offers will be accepted unless you get you know an approval from this person. So that that throws you know. Uh, it takes us a day or two of delay to even write it off. Well, what I think I, you know, I report those as data at errors, but I would like to see something in writing from the seller saying they're required. I mean, how can you require that? Well, the chances are 99 out of 100. Unless the seller um, just closed, you know, six months ago with a certain title company, or unless their daughter happens to work at the title company, the seller's not requesting no. it. It's the agent. But the pre call, the seller's probably not requiring that. No, it's just the agent. So I just want you to be very, very careful about West Provide license because they're out in force and one of their primary targets is Las Vegas. So be aware of that. Uh, the other things that went on for the board of directors, I don't know. Uh, most of you are fairly new agents, but if you know Linda Reinberger, Linda was installed as our 2015 regional vice president so kudos to her um last year there was 94 billion dollars spent by international investors in the united states so you want to know how to work with international investors you want to know how to find them you want to know how to market your properties to them i suggest you start going to the global business committee members meetings because each meeting is like oh god i just learned so much and you can go just go sit in uh, and then that's about it and then i came back late saturday night we're standing we're all to meet by 1 30 at the marriott boardman and the bus is going to pick us up to take us back to the Baltimore airport. We're all there early, we're all there with our luggage, we're waiting, we're waiting. Nelson James calls and says, uh, where's the bus? He's on his way, he'll be there in 15 minutes. We wait, we wait, we wait. Nelson calls again, he's just around the corner. The bus does not show up and now it's drop dead time. We either have to take a cab, or we're going to miss our flight back to Las Vegas. So we took a cab from darn near downtown DC back to the Baltimore airport. So that was it. Now the purpose of this one was to educate you a little bit, but this is kind of political, and if you're not into the political mode, you're probably, you're probably going, oh, God, this was so boring, when is she going to end? But I would encourage you, if you have spare money, that you attend the National Association of Realtors annual convention, which will be in November in New Orleans. This is where last year they had over 21,000 attendees. The classes are phenomenal. You get a book that's about this thick, or you can go online, and you can take an hour class here, an hour class here, an hour class there. You can take a class on listening presentation, class on working with buyers, you can take designation classes, and it is so well worth the money and the networking opportunities. If you need information, I'll give it to you, 
but it's going to be in New Orleans. And yes. Do you, could we get someone to come in and talk to us about common risk of violations? Yeah. Because I don't know. Sure, I'll, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll call somebody from HUD. Okay, so um, that's all I have. Gosh, I'm 10 minutes early. Anybody have anything for the common good? Oh, was a global committee. Okay, global committee. They're having an open forum. It's free. Um, Thursday. I want to say it's either at 9 or 10. Check with me. I've got it on my look it up on the computer. After this, I'll give you the number. It's, you just call uh, GLBAR. Don't forget to dial the 702-784-5000 and say, I want to make a reservation for the Global Committee open forum. So I would always call them for any of the Global Committees. I'm sorry? I would always call them for any of the Global Committees. No, I usually put it in the newsletter. You get a newsletter, your newsletter will go out this afternoon, and I will usually put in upcoming events. This is what's happening. But it's a real educational experience. Really, really is. And if you want to do international business, that's your place to start. Isn't it, uh, they have, when you sign into, um, what's it called, our new MLS, it's called what? Uh, Fusion. Fusion. When you sign into Fusion and the memo thing, and they usually have the memo. The message of the day. The yeah. Of the day the Always check the message of the day because it will tell you what's going on. Okay. And there's another organization, not so much NARAP, they don't really deal that much, I don't think, with international, but ARIA, which is an organization you can belong to, they have a lot of good educational programs. Most of their stuff is in the evening, and um, they're having one at the end of the month sometime. And it's going to be down at the lake, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Brooklyn Bowl. So if you want to know, just call. CRS committee. CRS meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Las Vegas Convention Center. I think anybody can go. Mm -hmm. I'm going on a CRS number. I'm a CRS. I'm going. I thought you were going. I am going. Oh, okay. So that's all I have. Just remember our CE class on Friday. Now, next week on Thursday, I think, check your newsletter. Um, we're going to have a lunch and learn. Now, this room is kind of small, and sometimes we get crowded, but we've developed a relationship, uh, no money's involved in the rest of the violation, for a new mortgage company right across the way, and they have access downstairs to a room that will seat 100 people very comfortably. If we have more than 100, they have folding doors that will open up, and then above the 100 is stadium seating. That's where the lunch and learn is going to be at 9501 Hillwood. On the outside of the building, it says something General Institute. Uh, the mortgage company is on the second floor of that building. The classroom is on the first floor. But the lunch and learn is going to be on probate sales. It's going to be given by two people who can't do a class on Friday because they are no kidding down in court dealing with probate sales. So it should be a lot of good information, and it will be free. And Marie Hara is putting out the flyer, but she's on vacation this week, so hopefully we'll get soon. And that's kind of all I have. Next Tuesday, Mastermind Lisa Waldeck, who is like a social media guru, is going to be here to talk about social media, how to use it, when to use it, how much to put on, how to get on all these different sites. Do you know what the CE class this Friday is going to be on? Is it, uh, yes, it's going to be conventional, FHA or VA, which is best for my buyer. So that's just general. It's right? general. It's free. Well, have a great day. Thank you.